We're here with Phil Helmuth and we're going to talk about short stacked play. Now first of all, Phil, what qualifies as being a short stack? Well, I mean, I think of a short stack as being someone that has less than, I don't know, 15 times the big blind. <clears throat> okay, so do you think that as a short stack it's wise to make a small bet or a raise or should it always be all in or nothing? Well, it depends on how short you are. I mean, I don't like it when someone has 15 times the big blind and they bet it all with ace-deuce. Okay. Because, that's, because everybody does that now, and it's just too predictable. And now someone with ace-jack can call because they're like, why did they bet 15 times and not three? So if you're short with ace-deuce and you're not going to push with it, do you make the call or you just muck it? Um, I may make a little raise. Okay. I may fold the hand. I may even move in with it sometimes. Okay. But it's just not something, it's not a strong play to move in there. So if you're a very short stack, you do manage to double up, but you still have way less chips than everybody else at the table. Is it wise to continue playing as a short stack, even if you don't specifically qualify as a short stack? You have more than 15 times the blind, but you have way less than everyone else? I mean, you know, there's times when you are short stacked or just above the short stack line mm -hmm. that you need to you just, I think being patient is still important. And uh, when you're a short stack, you're patient because, <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody's going to call you. Yeah. So, um... I still like to play patiently when I'm kind of low chipped. Okay. And what would be your best recommendation for someone who seems to be a chronic short stack? Well, there are a lot of people out there that are chronic short stacks. And the reason that they're chronic short stacks is because they, they don't play enough hands or they okay. just play too patiently. And so if you're going to play too patiently, you're not going to play enough hands, you're always going to be kind of a short stack. Okay. And then it's difficult, I mean, because then you need a big hand to double up. You know, you might get that big hand, but I'd like to see someone that's chronically a short stack learn to play more aggressively okay. or maybe even play a big pot with a little the worst of it. What about someone who is in a tournament and they always seem to build a big chip stack at the beginning, but then they're always short on the bubble? Uh, I've heard a lot of people say things like that. Is there something wrong with their play that that's happening as the blinds rise? Well, I mean, I think, I think some people, the people that play super aggressively, oftentimes accumulate a lot of chips early. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's part of being super aggressive. Okay. And then what happens is when you get deeper and deeper in the tournament, those aggressive plays aren't working because now there's annies. So yeah. now people are like, I'm not going to let him raise four in a row. I'm coming back over the top of him with ace four because it's probably the best hand. And now this guy who is bluffing and does play too many hands can't call the re-raise. Yeah. And so now he gets himself kind of, you know, short on chips right near the money because... He's making raises, he can't call the re-raises. So if you're one of these super aggressive players that gets a lot of chips early, you have to know when you can play super aggressively and when to back off. That makes sense. So what about if you're short stacked on the button and you, or excuse me, you're short stacked on the bubble in a tournament and you have a hand like pocket fives, pocket sixes, now you know you can make your way into the money if you just muck it. Would you push with that anyway? I would push with it anyway, fives or sixes. I would push. Now, I mean, I'm not going to come over the top of somebody. Yeah. But, I mean, I think it's okay to push there. And then the other thing is, um, you know, what kind of table do you have? I mean, if everybody at your table is trying to make the money and you're short stack. It's a better idea to push in that situation. It's a better idea to push with fives or sixes, yeah. But in general, I'm probably going to play that hand. I don't know. I mean, there were times last year where I'm trying to set the record for most times in the money. And, you know, I mean, I know that there's 100 and, I don't know, 100 players left. They're paying 90. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to break another record today if I can just last 10 players. Sometimes if I had a huge chip stack, I would continue to kind of play aggressively. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if I were short or medium stack, I'd just play even tighter just until people busted themselves. Okay. So that's a viable strategy to do that, um, especially even a short stack. You could do that, but, but I was also going to play if I picked up nines okay. or tens or eights. I wasn't going to just ante it off. So what about in a cash game? I know short stack play is very different because you can buy back in for more money, but what would you recommend to someone who finds themselves short stacked in a cash game doesn't want to buy back in? Should they use the same strategy as tournament short stack play? If Yeah, absolutely. If you're not going to buy back in, then definitely use the same strategy as tournament short stack play. And you have absolutely. the advantage of the blinds not going up. I would trap more, too. I mean, if I were, if I were short stack in a side game and I had two aces or two kings, I might limp in. Uh -huh. Because now if someone flops any pair, they're probably going to make, they're going to call you and now they're gonna you're a big favorite. They're going to have to call, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I would, you know, I would try a little more, I'd play a little more trappy. So if you could give one piece of advice to short stack players, what would your main piece of advice be? I mean, you know, I mean, play patiently um, because you're probably going to get called, uh, you know. And, uh, and so maybe have the goods? Even, have the goods, you know, and maybe even trap. I mean, you know, you might pick up two aces instead of moving in for 10x times the big blind. Okay. 
um, which is not a bad play with aces because they might put you on ace deuce. Yeah. Maybe just call. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, Phil. Lizzie Harrison with Phil Helmuth for Card Player TV.